Thank you. Well, I hope you've had a really good day so far. I'll try and keep it brief because I know you're running behind time slightly. Um, so I've entitled my talk, The Medicine, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. Hopefully that will become apparent as we go through. And um, I'm currently yeah, a clinical education fellow, which um, again I'll talk about throughout the talk. So I just wanted to start with um, my journey so far and what's brought me here and kind of brought me talking to you. So I went to a pretty bog-standard um, public secondary school and following that uh, sixth form. Um, I did biology, chemistry, maths and art, I think, as my um, A-level subjects. And I did actually get a place in medicine uh, at the age of 18, but... Um, I didn't quite get the grades. So then I decided to go to Plymouth University um, where I did um, marine biology or I thought that's what I wanted to do. I spent a week there and decided it really wasn't for me. So I then uh, started a degree in human biosciences at Plymouth. Luckily it was quite easy to kind of change my career uh, direction and I got a first class honours from there. And after that, I spent a year out getting some more experience, deciding whether medicine was really the right choice for me. And I got accepted to Warwick. And I spent um, five years here and then graduated. And I've worked at both George Eliot and um, University Hospital in Coventry on my F1, F2 placements. And now I work here. Um, I don't know who any of these people are. It was just the first picture that came up on the internet. Um, I work at Warwick Hospital. And I'm a clinical education fellow. Uh, again, I don't know who these smiley people are, but they looked happy. So, um, What I do on a general day-to-day -day basis is teaching and examining medical students. I find that quite weird because, like, three years ago I was a medical student. Um, but it's, it's, it's great. I really enjoy it, so it's good fun. I'm also an SHO in medicine, so as well as my teaching commitments, um, I'm also on the on-call rotor, so I'm still getting some clinical experience, which is really great. And I get to do other things as well. So this week I went to a um, kind of a training um, thing here on the Selection Centre at Warwick. So I will be exa uh, interviewing for uh, medical school in a couple of weeks' time. I'm involved with a research project at work and I'm an FY1 mentor, which basically means I help to mentor the, the foundation year doctors. So the key question, why medicine? When that horrible looking person ask you that question, what do you say? I think the key thing is they've heard everything before, so you're not going to find anything unique. Um, and I'm sure you've thought about it before, and there's lots of different reasons people want to do medicine, past experiences or whatever. So for me, it was my love of kind of human biology. I found the body fascinating, and I really enjoyed working, for pe working with people. And it was though the combination of those two things that I wanted to pursue further. But we'll go through medicine, the good, the bad, the ugly. I like this um, slide because it kind of... Being a medical student is a bit of all of this, really. Um, it's really exciting sometimes, but it's really hard at other times. But there are many good points, which I'm going to pick out. So I think the key thing, what lots of people say, is I want to make a difference, which is true. Um, when working in GP not that long ago, I had a guy that came in and he had some weakness of his leg and I was really worried about this because it was quite like new, it happened really suddenly. So I sent him off to hospital because um, I th thought he needed a scan urgently and the next day I found out that he had emergency surgery and without that emergency surgery he probably would have not been able to walk again. So I know it was only like the beginning of that long run of things that happened to him but you really can make a difference um, to some people's lives. It is a privileged position, not many jobs that people tell you like the most intimate part of their lives. So that's really key. As I said before, working with people is really important. It is intellectually challenging when you are on call and you manage to get a diagnosis and that can feel really great and you're always learning new things, which is great. And procedure based I've added as well because you will do lots of procedures as a foundation doctor. The other week I did my first lumbar puncture, which is putting a needle in someone's spine to take some of the fluid off. Um, and again, that's really exciting. Well, I find it really exciting. So this is a picture of um, my door when I was in GP practice. I think the title is really great as well. To be able to like send things to your house, being like, yes, doctor, on the front of that, that's great. 
Job security, hopefully I will have a job for life because we'll always need doctors, so that's really important. It's relatively well paid. Um, I do quite a lot on calls, but I am paid for that, so that's good. And it is really varied. You don't know what is going to walk through your door. Um, I think another thing to point out is there is a lot of different opportunities um, you have as a medical student. This is a picture of me um, on my elective in Borneo in Malaysia. Um, I got to go to a clinic over there, a hospital, and I did a medical trek through, through the jungle pretty much as well. So really exciting. And I actually managed to get a grant to go and do that because I wouldn't have been able to afford it otherwise. So take all opportunities you have really is what I'm saying there. So we're going to move on to the bad. So this was a picture of me at my graduation. Um, some of you may notice I've actually uh, got crutches. So I injured my knee and I had to wait a good few months before I could have my operation because they wouldn't let me do it before finals, basically. Um, so I think it just seems like medicine does kind of take over your life and that can be sometimes really difficult. So <laughs> four or six years you should spend at medical school. I took eight years getting to be a doctor. Um, I did three years, obviously, as an undergrad, and then I actually failed an exam twice and had to reset because I didn't realise I was dyslexic at the time. Uh, so it actually took me eight years. So it's a really long time, and that's something to bear in mind. Um, there's a lot of exams, and if you don't like exams or find them difficult, that can be really hard. It's a very pressurised environment. You're in medical school with a lot of other people who are very intelligent and striving to do their best, and that can be really difficult to deal with. Sometimes called medical school the bubble, because medics don't tend to socialise with anyone other than medics. So it can feel a bit isolating at times. And as I mentioned before, it's a long time and to have financial constraints for that period of time can be really difficult as well. I spoke before about a dyslexia, being dyslexic. Um, I had to take a test which cost £250. At the time they said I'd get the money back again after I'd paid for the test. But then they seemed to think I could afford it, which led me into debt and I had to then apply for a hardship fund to make sure I could pay my rent. So things like that are just really difficult, and trying to do that on top of exams is, is tough. And it is lifelong training. I'm sure you've seen kind of slides like this before, but even to become like the least specialised, I suppose, to become a GP, it's still a number of years. And if you want to become something like a neuroscientist or um, max fax surgeon, that is a lot of years that you're training for. And that's not taking into account if you take a career break or you decide to have a family, so it's a long time. So I think this is just pointing out just the further bad bits that I'm going to go through. This is a picture of me um, on Christmas Day working in A&E because you don't A&E doesn't stop for anything. Um, the rotor is sometimes really hard. People have struggled to get time off for like their weddings and things like that. Um, it is nights. It is shift work. It is sometimes really hard to have a good work-life balance. Point, on, point again, but exams, 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 because even after medical school, they don't stop. Emotional impact is really important. I mean, I've worked in paediatrics, and having sick children is, is pretty tough. Um, luckily, I haven't had to deal with anything really emotional, but you've got to be able to cope with that in some way. Uh, medical legal aspects. So I'm sure you've heard about... Um, Bauer Garber and similar things like that that have happened in, in the news, but most doctors will at some point be sued during their career, maybe more than once. So that's a lot of stress. And stress not just for that, but stress on a daily basis. You're working on wards, you've got a lot of patients to deal with, um, a lot of jobs to do, and it is really stressful at times. On the other side, it can be really mundane as well. You just feel like a paperwork monkey, just ordering tests, especially at lower levels. So that can be sometimes a bit difficult. And you learn all this stuff at medical school, and then you figure out, like, in the first few years, half of it you don't really even need to know. And, again, it can be like, why did I bother um, if you're just doing paperwork all the time? Moving on to the ugly, then. Um, this is a cake, I think, of the Bristol stool chart, which is used to measure... Um, people's poo basically. So I've just got some deal breakers here. These are things you should think about if you're really considering a career in medicine and maybe if it might not be the best idea. 
I said before money. So, yes, as a doctor, you are relatively well paid because you work some horrible hours sometimes and they do pay you quite well for that. But if you're looking for a job that's kind of maximum money for minimal effort, I would probably think again. If you don't enjoy learning, then I would again suggest that medicine probably isn't for you, as I've said about all the exams and things. If you don't like working with others, that's a deal breaker as well. At least as a junior doctor, you're going to be working in teams, you're going to be working um, with patients, so think again if you don't like working with others. And don't do it for anyone else. If you're thinking about medicine because your parents want you to do it or your teacher wants you to do it, then that's probably not a good reason either. However, think about your career options. If you think there's nothing else that, would, that you'd want to do at all, nothing else, then I'd really think medicine, yeah, go for it. Um, and someone once told me you'll spend most of your adult life working, basically. So you really need to find something that you enjoy. When people ask me if I enjoy my job, I say some days yes, some days no. Um, but mostly I do enjoy it and that's really important. So my top tips, I'll briefly go through this because I think you've had a lot of tips today and things, so I won't dwell on this. But experience is, is so important. I know Warwick now don't um, interview anyone who haven't got a minimum amount of experience and that has to be working directly with patients, with people um, with disadvantages, things like that. Try and get experience in lots of different specialties and things if you can because um, they're all so varied and so different. Extracurricular activities, you've probably been told about this as well but like, try and get as much experience and you know, roles in that as, as you can because in interviews they will ask you about teamwork, about leadership and if you don't have examples of those then you're really going to struggle. Um, that was just banging on about experience again. Um, this is going to hurt was Adam Kay's book, who's the first guy I put on the video. If you haven't read his book I really would do it because it's a good read, it's funny for one thing, um, there's lots of stories in there but also he does point out some really tough times in his own career that he's had um, which I think really kind of tell you a lot about medicine. I use some of these books for my interviews and like for the um, UK cat and things like that although they, don't, they suggest don't spend too much time on these books or going to really expensive courses and things like that I think they do help you to kind of structure your answers to things and how you think about things in interview. Um, if you can get any mock interviews, that's really helpful. And people to read your personal statements and all that kind of thing because more opinions are going to be helpful to you. So just a bit on about my career path before we end. Um, so at the moment, I'm a clinical education fellow. Then I'm going to locum for a bit. So locuming is basically you don't have a job but you just work where they need you and you can be paid really well for that um, and then I'm gonna may hopefully travel for a bit. I really wanted to be a paediatrician um, that's what I really wanted to do because I love children's medicine and I really enjoyed my paediatric placement however when I started looking more into it and thinking can I really do seven more years now especially when I you know I want a family and I want work-life balance and all that I thought I don't think I can so my plan is to become a portfolio GP. So this is basically a GP with many different hats. You do some GP sessions a week, then you can become a, a gypsy or a GP with extended roles. So you can do this in lots of different areas. I spent a, a morning with a GP who specialised in dermatology the other week and um, he basically did like a mini surgery clinic. He took out cancers and um, sebaceous cysts and things, which I, I really liked. So that's something I'm looking into. As you can probably tell, I'm, I'm quite into medical education. So I'd like to do that as part of, my, um, part of my career. You can get involved in care commissioning. I'm not so keen on this. This is more like a managerial thing, but some people really like that as well. And research is something else you can get involved in. So just a final note. Um, I think determination is really key. You can probably tell from <laughs> what I've told you today that I didn't have an easy route to getting into medicine and becoming a doctor. It took me quite a long time and some pretty stressful events and things that went on. But if you really want to do it, then if I can, you can. So um, yeah, determination is the key really. Keep going. And um, I'll be happy to answer any questions now or afterwards. Thank you.